<laughs> okay, hey, I just went through half of the presentation. <laughs> we had a little glitch. Welcome to Festool Friday and Festool Live. It's now probably 12.05, sorry about the glitch. Here we go. Okay, now. <sighs> Today's topic is routers. But before I get started, I gotta tell you, check it out. Woohoo! We're safe distancing. I got my six foot stick. Oh, and for everybody around the world, it's two meters. <clears throat> the people in this room are volunteers, and I gotta announce you guys. We have Big D or Derek on camera. We have Chris on our other cameras. We have Rick here writing down your questions so I can answer them at the question and answer um, segment. Okay? But I also wanna thank some other people, and they're online. We have Steve. We have Alan and we have Brent, and they'll be answering your questions as we go, okay? Because, boy, they came fast and furious last time. All right, this is our second edition. All right, I love saying that. All right, but there's other people I got to thank before I get going. I got to thank, we are open for business here at Festool, okay? And I got to thank our warehouse employees who've been coming in. We've been running split shifts, okay? Everybody is, is working safe here. Also, our repair service department, customer service, we're all working from home, okay? Marketing's working from home. We have finance working from home. And also, and I want to say thank you to all you folks out there who are our regional sales managers. You're doing a great job. Keeping going, guys. Thank you so much. All right. The way this works is we have a, a little bit of an outline, and I'm going to go into our topic right away here. And as I go through it, please hold your questions to the end. I know you hate that, but you can ask the questions as, that, as I'm doing it. And Rick's going to write them on a the board, and we're going to get to as many as possible. Okay? Routers is our most versatile uh, category, and we have tons and tons of accessories. But I can't go through all of them. All right? Uh, and then I'm going to run a little bit of a demo. We'll do questions and answers, and we'll do a quick wrap-up. Okay, let's just get going. Let's get the tools. Enough of that. All right? So, these are our routers. Okay? We have the MFK700, the OF1010, OF1400, OF2200. All right? So, how do you choose? That's, that's, I'm going to oversimplify this. There's a hundred ways to choose this. Which one is for me? It's our top question. Okay? But... <laughs> I want to break them into categories quickly. Everybody buys for horsepower and other brands. Well, in our brand, there's a variety of reasons you, yeah, you can buy for horsepower, but let me categorize them. Okay, so you have the 700, okay? That's your trim router. That's a horsepower, okay? You have the 1010. That's your horse, horse and a half category. You have your 1400. That's your two and a half, two and three quarter. And then this big guy here, the 2200, is your three and a quarter, three and a half. Now, Really quick, if you want to know horsepower to watts, okay, it's pretty simple. 740, this is what I was taught, 746 watts is roughly a horsepower. So now you can put them in that category, okay? Now there's another reason you choose a router from Festool is because you have these router bits. Now when somebody comes up to me and says, oh boy, a router, I don't care what brand it is, a router is expensive? No, it's not. Guess what's expensive is the router bits. So make your choice wisely. And at Festool, we have different size collets. A collet is pretty simple. A collet is what holds the router bit into the motor shaft. Okay? And here in North America, we have quarter inch and half inch shanks. Okay, so you've got to choose the right router that accepts these. Now, worldwide, we have 8 millimeter, eight millimeter shank router bits. Okay, and that's a standard worldwide. So here's how I'm going to break it apart. See these two? I'm going to break them first in these, this category, this category. Okay, these two take, excuse me, 8 millimeter, quarter inch router bits. That's it. These, the uh, 1400 and 2200, they take <clears throat> eight millimeter, quarter inch, 
in half inch router bits, shanked router bits. So that's, that's kind of like an easy way to do it. But there's another way, okay? And I want you to see this. See this, this is a round over. Okay, sometimes you break an edge, maybe it's a table edge, it's a decorative profile. This could actually be on top of a bookcase, right? Now when you look at that and you look at the size of the holes or apertures in on the base, and I'm going to tilt these over, you'll see the size. You're not putting this bit in here. <laughs> Follow me? And look at the different round overs. I broke it apart. Look, you have a small, medium, large, and extra large. So that's how you look at this. And the diameter of these, or the, the distance between them, this is 26 millimeters or one inch. This one here, the 1010, is an inch and 70, 7 eighths or 50 millimeters. See? <laughs> this one here is 2 and 15 30 seconds or 63 millimeter. So when you're looking at your router bits and you're trying to find, hey, which Festool router's for me? Okay, and this one, look, this is very powerful. You gotta swing these big bits. It's a three and a half or 89 millimeter aperture. Okay, so that's what I call the oversimplification on how you choose them. Now, there may be questions coming in right now. Hey, say this edge, say this edge. Guess what, we only were doing these for about a half hour. And if you think about it, we could teach you, and this is, wait a minute, this is another Festool Friday uh, Live. This is another Festool Live. Each one of these is what I'm getting at. We will delve into this as Festool Live progresses. Promise you, okay? So, <clears throat> now comes the next segment that I wanted, I wanted to make sure we could cover. Okay, I'm gonna move my T-Lock hand sanitizer over here. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay, and I'm gonna grab this bit. Okay, it's an 18 millimeter diameter bit. And this segment I'm gonna call, <laughs> why a Festool router? All right, of course, and you guys know that a router is the most versatile uh, tool in any woodworking shop, any job site. The router rules, okay? But it's also the messiest, okay? It creates a of dust. So, number one, yes, Festool, we better be good at it. We have killer dust extraction. You'll see that in a few minute, minutes. But also, it works in our system. It works on the daggone guide rail. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I just chose the 1400. I'm going to show you how to set it up on the guide rail. All right? And you could just use it on the guide rail. But you can, but if you combine it with the multifunction table, you have repeatability. You can do angles. Right now, I'm just gonna step over here and grab a couple of pieces so we can talk about it. Okay, you can do grooves, you can do dados, you can do stop dados, you can do mortises. Today I'm gonna do a mortise. Okay, I always point out, because people go, well, isn't a groove the same as a dado? No, a groove goes long grain, a dado goes cross grain. I thought I'd point that out. <laughs> They're the same thing, <laughs> all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to stop and start precisely, just like this on these lines, using the multifunction table, our guide rail, and the OF1400. But we're going to use this. This is called a guide stop. The rods, okay, the guide stop comes with those two pieces and that piece. And I'm going to show you how this all goes together. I'm going to get that out of the way so you can see it. Okay, and everybody gets this, but what they don't get when they come to a training class is what's this scale for? I'll show you in a minute. This is kind of for me, this, when Steve showed me this out in Las Vegas, I went, oh man, it was like a, it was a huge aha moment I had. <clears throat> okay, let's get started. Let's put the router bit in first, okay? I'm gonna put it in the collet right here, and I'll hopefully we get this at the right angle that I need. I got the eight millimeter in there. I'm gonna back it out just a skosh. Okay, just like that. See this green tab right here? This is the ratcheting collet. So when I take the wrench and put it on the flats here, so if I go like this, that means I'm tightening it up. Listen, see that? And man, I could tighten that up. It's only one wrench. That saved me maybe a minute or two of time, and that's the name of the game, is saving time with Festool. 
OK, I'm going to set that off to the side. Now I'm going to set this up. This is known as a guide stop. If we can come in here, cameraman, and see this. You see these two little tabs here? See them? This either goes here or out here. OK, so when I put the rods in like this, I'm going to slide it in. Whoop, 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 whoop. Just like this. I always offset things. You'll see how it's easy to get on the machine. OK, I'm going to put it on here. And just like you guys know, who out there has got a track saw? Okay, you know when you put the, the tr track saw on the guide rail, you have those cams? It's to knock out the lateral tolerance, right? Well, that's what we're do I'm going to do here. If I put this on here and grab it by the rods like this and go like this, and it's wiggling back and forth, then what I'll do is I'll take a posi drive screwdriver, okay, a posi drive tip, and make sure you use a Festool <laughs> screwdriver for this, <laughs> okay? You can only use a Festool screwdriver, all right? Okay, so when you put it in there, you see how I'm tightening that pause you drive screw? That pushes that tab like this. So you want the right amount of friction on there, but you still want it to slide, you know, without hesitating. Okay, next part, I got my router bit in there. I'm going to take it, see these two holes right here? I'm going to slide it in. Here's the knob right here. This is how it clamps down. I'm going to take it like this and put it right on the rail. The router writes partially on the rail, and I'm going to tighten this knob. It's called a central clamping knob. I call it the uninaba. I'm going to take this, and here's my... See, this wants to fall off like that. All right? But what this support bracket does, duh, it supports the router. Okay? And take it like this. You see how I'm pushing it down? And now it rides in the same plane as the guide rail. The guide rail is five millimeters thick. Okay, Whew. so I have that set up. Now, I need to make sure, this is an 18 millimeter bit. I wanna make a mortise that accepts this 18 millimeter thick plywood. So what I wanna do is I've seen people go like this. They take it, they lock it down, and they move it back and forth to either side of this line. But here's what's super cool about Festool routers. Every single one of these on this table has a scribed center line. It is right here. Check it out. See it? It's right there. It's right here on the scale. It's back here and right over here. So it's a quadrant system. We're the only router system in the world that has those scribed center lines. It's because we precision grind these rods. That's why. So when I take this and I move it over, and I'll probably get in the way, and I'm doing this fast. I'm not looking for absolute perfection. I just want to do this demonstration for you. See how I line that up? I scribe the center line. Okay, so if this is 18, what's half of 18? Nine. <laughs> okay, so if I have that center line at nine, I know I'm going to be dead on. Cool. So I have that set up. Now, I want to stop that bit precisely here. Come in here so we can see this, guys. Precisely there and start it precisely here. So the way I do this, and <coughs> stay right there, Big D. Look, I'm going to move this over. And this is 18 millimeters, so half of 18, you guys told me, is 9. I'm going to stop it right there. See it? Now, you guys, hopefully you know what this is. This is called a limit stop. This helps you when you're using your track saws, okay, from pulling up when you're plunge cutting. We use these as stops. See that? So I can set this up. See? Wait a minute. I'm going to stop back. How many times in woodworking, okay, or on a job site or in a shop, have you made a jig, okay, to take and you spent an hour building a jig, right? Okay? And guess what? You take that, you put it to run against a saw blade or run against a router bit, and you spent hours building that jig. Do you throw that jig away? No, you don't. Because you take it, you put your piece on, you go like this, boom, 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 and you're done. You never throw a jig away because someday you may need that. You put it up on the shelf, don't you? You know what I call those? I call those time trophies. Well, if we look at how we're setting this up right now with all these stops and starts, when you incorporate the MFT3 table, the whole system becomes an ever-evolving jig. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to move that scale back over here to 9 on this side, bring it in, and think. Everybody think about this. Look, I got a repeatable stop. I, I just built a jig in less than five minutes, okay? And I don't, I don't have to put it up on a shelf. I could use it for another jig. 
Hopefully you're following me and hopefully I'm making sense. All right, so I got that set up. Now, <laughs> the last increment of measurement we got to work on is what? Depth. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to start at zero. Follow me on this, everybody. I'm going to, here's my, this is a, this plunge. I'm going to plunge down and I'm going to lock that bit at what I call ground zero. Okay, now if we come in here, and I'm going to do this so the camera can get it. Okay, see this? I always set it. These are depth steps in case I don't want to take the whole six millimeters. That's my plunge depth I'm going to use. Okay, and you see that? I always use the last turret stop. If I need to micro adjust, I take my micro adjust, I bring it to zero. See how I line up zero right here with this line? I'm not going to micro adjust today, but I'm going to push the rod down. And this tab here, may be up. I'm going to push that down and zero it out. Okay. Now, if I take this, wait a minute. I want to go down six millimeters. I need to create space between here and here, six millimeters. Or I can use the scale. I like to use gauge blocks. Now, I'll tell you, see this? This is a domino. This is a six by 40 domino. It's six millimeters thick. I'm going down six millimeters. Look what I'm going to do. Look, I'm going to take that and put it right in there like that. See? And then I'm going to lock the depth stop rod like this. Let me just come over here so I can check it. See? Now I'm going to go down to zero, which I have it locked down to, and go an extra in-depth six millimeters. On a future uh, episode, we can also go into micro adjust and other little topics of, uh, of fine topics of like depth setting and stuff like that. Okay, so I have that set up, right? Now I got to put on dust extraction. See these two little tabs? Okay. I just, <laughs> it kills me sometimes when people come into a training class and they said, oh, I didn't know it had an, a window that opened up. <laughs> okay, there's a window here on your dust extraction nozzle. Okay, the two little tabs go right into these two little mortises in back. Okay, this, oh boy, I don't know if we're going to get this on camera. There's a little green tab that I'm locking down under the base. See if we can get that, guys. See it right there? I took this tab and brought it right in there. Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to close the window. All right. I got everything set up. Okay, now, before I run any router ever, I always check my setup. I'm going to make sure everything is tight, it's ready to go. I'm also, before there's any power, I'm going to make sure that it is cycled off. Okay, here we go. Now, I always put dust extraction on first. We have a lock on system now with the dust extraction. I line up the arrows. I put it in, I turn it and lock it. Okay, I get it all set up. Now, I get the power. All right, and when I put the power in, before I do it, okay, my hand goes on the guide stop and it never comes off of the guide stop. Okay, I'm gonna get it. And remember, when you put a plug it cord in, it's a full quarter turn. Don't forget that. All right, I'm gonna turn it on and hopefully you can hear me this week over the, over the noise. <laughs> Okay, look where I'm going to plunge from the top. Okay, the did you notice my hand still has not left and I've not gone near the route a bit? Now, everybody come in here and see this. See how I started it precisely and stopped it precisely. All right, so that is why Festool routers. <laughs> okay, wow, Rick's been busy writing some questions <laughs> on there. Let's see what we got. Well, I'm just making drawings. Oh, oh no! <laughs> No, first one. Loose screw woodworks buying a domino, domino today. Yeah. Equals. Wow! Thank you! Yeah. Cool. Then it's not a router. Oh, <laughs> when's the TID 18 in North America? Let me go hide it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's coming, baby. And it is awesome! Follow us on social. All right, yes, follow us on social. And I, I can't tell you. I want to. I'm jonesing. Okay. 
Okay, what comes with the 1400? All right. Woo! That's a good question. Because I, and I mentioned this earlier. Whoop, 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 whoop. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, look, we're still two meters, six feet apart. Okay, good. All right. What comes with the router? Okay, here we go. I'm going to take that off. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to grab. Well, it's changed in the last year. Did anybody get an emerald edition? If you got an emerald edition, it came with a killer accessory, the uh, parallel edge guide. Okay. Um, normally, it comes with an 8 millimeter, quarter and a half inch collet. It comes with the rods. It comes with the $200 wrench. It comes with this chip deflector, which I will go into in another episode when we get in depth on um, the 1400. Okay, uh, it comes with a template guide adapter for the two piece template guides. It comes in a sustainer four, and you guys know how to tell the difference between the heights of the sustainers, right? You count the bars, one, two, three, four, on the T-locks, not Gen 3. Okay, and I'm going to check just in case I, I miss something. And that's it. Any other questions? Yes. How do you use the guide bushings with the router? Uh, oh, man. I'd love to show you that. Hang tough. Okay. I got guide bushings. And here is why. This, guys, this is another killer reason to buy a 1400 and a 2200 because they're self-centering template guides. Whew, this is awesome. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to break out some template guides. I'm going to break out traditional, the two-piece template guides, and I'm going to break out, I think I have some right here, 1400. Wow, this is interesting. Oh, here we go. I'll break out a 1400 template guide. Okay, so let's talk metric really quick. A template guide follows a template. Okay, so I have the perfect example. If you give me a second, I got it buried. Hang on, a little bit of behind the scenes. Okay, so I love having this to explain template guides for everybody. Okay, so a template, template guide, okay, follows this. I, I need to make 50 of these, okay? I want to put in a straight bit, and this goes on the bottom of the router to follow the template so I can make a cutout, okay? But it's not going to follow perfectly here. You need to calculate this distance, okay? So when I take a metric template guide, see this? This is 30 millimeters outside diameter, and I have it listed here. Look, this is 30 millimeters OD, outside diameter, okay? If I put a 10 millimeter bit in there, here's the math. I always got to remember this. So what you do is you subtract the diameter of the bit from the outside diameter, you get 20, and you divide by 2, and what is that, everybody? It's 10 millimeters. So look, I got a 10 millimeter domino. Look, it's a 10 millimeter offset. See that? Okay. So that's how simple as it gets. Now when I take that, you see the two tabs right here? Okay, if I put that on the router right there, watch. That is self-centering on other people's router systems. You have to take a pointed bit, we call them no bits. Okay, knowing bits or no bits or centering bits. And you push it down like this, you lock it down. Okay, because the bases aren't even, ours are. Okay, and you gotta loosen up all these screws and you gotta center it on that tapered bit. Okay, with ours, and that takes a little bit of time. With ours, anytime I put anything in there, it's self-centered. Okay, now to release anything out of these tabs, it's these two green pieces here, and as I push it in, it falls out. Now, you're probably used to this. Okay, you have template guides. We call them two-piece template guides like this. Okay, you get your lock nut and you get your template guide. Okay included with every 1400 router is this. See that? Okay. So if I take that template guide and I put it in there and, and watch, listen, 
there's bare, there's nothing. It's negligible, okay? And I take the lock nut like this, and I tighten it up, and I put that in there. It's also self-centered. So if you got a jig or something, and you want to, you know, like a dovetail jig from a manufacturer that you want to, and you have these template guides, yes, you can use the 1400 with it, 2200 because it's self-centering. And I'm going to show you something wicked cool on the uh, MFK 700. See this? This is the one that's for North America. It's threaded. So, sorry to walk away from the camera. So if I take that, watch, and I want to put a template guide in there, it screws in, and it's centered. Okay? So there you go. How are we doing? We're almost at the half hour. Limits of bits with MFK. Clear some bits. Oh my god. Okay, so. Here in North, okay, this camera. <laughs> Here in North America, uh, we don't sell a lot of the Fest Tool router bits. Okay, you guys already have a bunch of router bits. So, so somebody worldwide might be watching Fest Tool Live and saying, "What do you mean? I got all kinds of Fest Tool router bits." No worries. We have limitations on one tool that you have to know about. Okay, um, and that's why in the catalog we have router bits. Pretty much, I don't want to say they're exclusive, but they're, they're pretty much dialed in for one router. And it's this, the MFK 700. And the reason for that, okay, and I got one of a couple bits in the catalog. I just popped this one out, is this. And let me, uh, let me do this really quick. I'm going to swing over here and get a wrench for the, ten, uh, for the MFK. The MFK is a little bit different, changing a bit. I don't want to get too much into all the other routers today, but I will do this one. Check this out. You, you just push this. It finds a through hole in the ABBA shaft. I take it out. When you chuck this bit up, see how I go? I pull it out just a skosh, okay? And then I tighten it up. And the reason is this. So when you are using the MFK 700, the set comes with this. It's a one point five degree base. So when I, it, it was designed for edge banding. So when I put this on, you see the notch right here? You line it up with the knob. So I can guide this router, okay, <laughs> to trim banding horizontally. And it trims it at 1.5 degree, and you get an absolutely flawless trim of that edge banding. All right, but here's the reason that you should always get the MFK bits you have little or no clearance between the collet and here. Okay, so that answers that question. All right. Oh, wow, look at this. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick wrap up. All right, uh, I wanna check my notes really quick because I don't like to forget anybody. Um, God, we're getting so many great questions from you, whether on YouTube or Twitter. Um, the, uh, just so you know, the, this is Instagram Live, and uh, you're all on it. But guess what? We'll post this Monday morning on YouTube. We're going to be coming at you once a week, maybe twice a week soon, okay? Please be safe. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Be safe out there. Thanks for hunkering down, everybody. Uh, I can't wait to see you again at Demo Days. Um, I want to thank everybody in this room right now. You guys are awesome. Uh, but I also want to, <laughs> Rick's written here, I love this. I want to say hello to Brazil, Russia, Amsterdam, UK, Amsterdam, UK, and Canada, baby! Thank you, everybody. It was our pleasure. Stay safe. And don't forget to wash your hands.